Welcome back to the channel. We are here again with my HP TE01 2250XT, which was the cheapest HP I could buy brand new when I bought it, like two years ago at this point. They're still using like the TE01 chassis right now, so everything we're going to talk about is still relevant, even though I'm a little behind on schedule here. And today what we're going to talk about is adding an optical drive to this guy, like right here, because this guy did not come with one. But before we get into all that, I should say right up front, this is not an upgrade I recommend you actually do. It's not often that I would tell people outright to just not do something. But in the case of this guy, it just financially doesn't make any sense. You have to buy an entirely different front bezel, you have to buy the drive, and HP uses their own weirdo mounting system. So by the time you're done doing that, you could be into this for about 200 bucks. This chassis is now old enough out in the world that you can buy one of these in low spec form that is we'll say as old as this one and heavily used for less than that that comes with an optical drive. Also, let's not forget that we live in a world where these things exist. USB external optical drives. This one is sucky, but it'll get you by. I made an entire video about this guy, which is not sucky, which is awesome, and will do way more than get you by. If you were all the kind of person that was worried about this to begin with, you should probably go with one of these and just be done with it um, probably for the rest of your days. I think we're one or two chassis generations away from these things not having an external drive bay, period. So in the very near future, if you want an optical drive at all, this is the way you're going to have to go anyway. So I say just prepare for it now. Anyhow, I will link the video where I discussed that guy and this guy in detail up there as well as down in the description so you can go check that out if you would like. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the parts you're going to need to get started should you choose to ignore my advice. This is specific to the HP Envy line by the way. There is a... dang it, what are they called? Pavilion! HP Pavilion! That has basically this same port arrangement but it doesn't have this trapdoor style case the way the Envy does. It just has a regular slot cover. So if you have a pavilion you would want to do this too. You do not need to buy one of these, which is what makes this really an impractical upgrade. I bought this one, supposedly new. It very clearly isn't. You can look around it and see wear on it. I think for like 110 bucks. I think HP charges something like 250 for one, you know, something like that. Just not practical to buy one, but you're going to need one if you want to do this. Likewise, you could always try and cut your own thing out of the one you have or whatever else, but that's kind of on you. You will also need one of these. HP uses these little proprietary clips to install their odd drives, so you'll need one of those. Good news for you is that I bought like a 10-pack of these because there's only a few dollars more than just buying one. So should you need one, let me know. I can hook you up with a good deal. And you'll need one of these, which is the optical drive itself. I'm a big fan of the LG GUD0N optical drives. They seem to perform okay, they seem to hold up okay. This particular one I bought from a cheaper source than I normally would. They're basically there's one for 40 bucks and there's one for 30 bucks. I'm not convinced this one's actually new or that it's even authentic LG, I don't know. You can tell by the packaging here that she could be suspect. There's, you know, like a brochure for like heat sinks and safety glasses and, you know, garbage. I will link all this stuff in the description like I always do, or at least give you part numbers and stuff, but I'm going to link the more expensive source for these drives because I don't know if this one's actually new. And if you're going to buy a used drive, go ahead and buy one that you know is used and save even more, save even more money. But yeah, anyhow, you're going to need a drive, you're going to need one of these clips, you're going to need one of these covers. And you may or may not need a SATA cable. Mine actually came with a spare SATA cable in it. So no big deal, but you might have to buy one of those. Again, everything linked in the description. But since we are here and it's going to be easy to show you, we're just going to go ahead and install this little green guy onto the drive. And it is extremely straightforward. There are screw holes along the edge of the drive. The first pin in this guy, that guy right there, goes in that hole. And then you just kind of have to pull it back and it snaps in. So that's that done and dusted. Let's get the computer up here and get to work inside it. First thing we're going to need to do is take the case slide off, which is no big deal. There is a screw back here, which is probably going to be a little stiff if you never had yours off before. It is both Torx and flathead. But once it's loose, it remains captive. Put your finger in the hole, 
pull it back and then this kind of slips off the side. Next thing we're going to do is remove this front bezel because we need to replace it with the one that is suitable for odd drives. To do that, you just pull these clips and unlatch them. And then it kind of just hinges off the front. And let me tell you, even the one without the optical drive door is quite the bit of engineering. This thing probably weighs about a pound and a half for reasons I couldn't explain. But there we go. Now we're all in. And we just have a knockout that we have to remove to be able to slip a drive in. There's a picture of a screwdriver on that thing. I'm not sure exactly why. Or maybe that's not a screwdriver. I don't know. You be the judge. But I'm hoping that we can, yeah, more or less just bend it out of there with finger power. Kind of. And I'm sure this will be sharp. So a pair of gloves might be a good idea. As I say that. I'm going to start pushing on it with a pair of pliers. Yeah. Just trying to get it bent out the other way is probably going to be a little fun. Just to make this marginally easier on ourselves for the time being. I think I'm going to pull this drive cage off. And I think to do it, we just have to get kind of gutsy with it. I think it pops in up here in the front. I've had this off before. I just don't remember how. <laughs> Scratch that up nicely. There we go. Yeah. No folds down gets out of our way and this guy I think can hinge up yeah it's got a little arrow on it that shows it does but there's a screw I think that guy in the front I need to take out and I think this guy will hinge up out of our way yep and just comes out now I have a little better access to the back side of that so again just to try and keep me away from sharp edges I'm just going to use a pair of pliers here just wiggle jiggle until it pops out and there it is now I'm going to put all this stuff back on just the way you saw me take it off because that's how the odd drive mounts. Alrighty, I think our next mystery here is just to simply slide the drive in. I think this is probably the orientation. It is slid all the way in. It is being held by its clip. So if we push that clip down, the drive will slide back out. Good deal. And on my model, here is the spare SATA cord that it came with. You can see it's plugged into the board right back there. We're going to need to come up with a spare power cord too. You know what? Got ahead of myself. It'll just be a lot easier to see for you guys to see without that in my way. The included cord is awfully stiff. And it's also in one of what I believe to be the high speed sockets. So I just pulled it off the board there. And I will reinstall it in one of these positions that's a little further up after I get it plugged into the drive. And this also appears to be a peculiar, what I'll call SATA left cord, where it's got the little notch going that way. So it's going to end up installing like that on the back of the drive. Like so. The cord kind of has a more natural tendency to plug in. Like this, I think. There we go. All right. I don't think anything's got too much pressure on it or anything. I think we're good. Where we may not be good... Is I actually need a smaller SATA power plug than that. I don't know if they gave me one. Now we're going to need our full-size SATA to mini SATA power adapter cord that I totally remembered to buy before we began the project. And it just plugs into one of these full-size guys right here. And then the other end of it plugs into the drive. And you will take note that these are keyed. You can see it's got that little leg. That needs to align with a little leg on the drive. And if it wasn't clear... The data cable also has one of those. So in our case, that's going to look a lot like so, I think. Yep, just like that. Alrighty, I'm going to put all the hardware back on the side here, the mounting brackets and such that I took off to give you a little better view. And then maybe try and come up with uh, something a little better than that for some wire routing. With this cover back on, you can see there's a little slot in it right there that to me is just screaming for us to put a zip tie in. But at the same time, I'm going to leave it kind of loose so we can fish the cord back out of it later if we go to service something else here. So basically all I'm trying to do is just like keep this wire out of the fans. So something like so, just so the wire can't get back here in the CPU fan or in the case fan. And I'm going to use a set of flush cuts, which are what they sound like, to cut this off flush so we don't have a little razor sharp little zip tie edge. Hopefully I didn't just tighten it too much to do its job. No, should be okay there. And just for hopefully a better view of what I'm talking about, I've just got that looped on there loosely just to corral that guy. 
So now I think the next thing to do is just put our uber expensive cover on. Should just hinge on the way the old one hinged off. Yeah, there are little tabs that demarcate where the hinges go. Let's try and be a little careful here to make sure I'm actually in them so I don't break this ridiculously expensive trim piece. I'm not convinced I'm in this top one. Okay. <laughs> I see what could be a small issue already. This doesn't set flush, but at the same time, and it's not setting flush because it's got a little barb on it that hits the button. So you can actually just poke that flap and the drive should eject itself open. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm hoping that this drive actually has enough space to clear that little flap. All the pictures I've seen on the internet of these things are always straight on. So you, you know, you can't tell what the angle of the dangle should particularly be there. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting that that is not the design. If I wanted to, I could probably come in here and file this down or trim it down, and maybe I will at some point. But for the most part, that's not really going to bother me for it to be like that. And it's pretty positive. Um, I'll only let it become an issue if it is an issue, and it turns out the drive tray won't open past that barb. We'll find out here in just a moment. So you can see I've got the side back on it. I've got it all plumbed in and ready to power up. So let's do exactly that and see what happens. We appear to be booting. That's good news. Let's see if the drive will eject. Yep. Cool. It did occur to me I can probably also just remove this front plate if I wanted to. And that will probably allow that to sit more flush. But I kind of like this plate being on here because it'll keep the drive more dustproof. <laughs> oh, that might be an issue. Is every time I try and close the little flap, I'm probably going to want to eject the drive. I imagine the real HP drive has something that actually closes that. But there's no way I'm going to pay real HP prices, so it is what it is. Let's put a disc in it and see if it works. Let's go with some good old MC 900 foot Jesus. It's making noises. That's good, I guess. Yep, and Windows saw it. Wants to know what to do with audio CDs because it's never seen one before. I need to find my HP mouse. Where did it go? Hmm, it's a me thing or a you thing? Okay then, incidentally, it looks like I answered another question, which is how long the batteries in the mouse last? And with them sitting around mostly idle, I would say that's probably around a year. So pretty good. Anyway, let's go check out our drive. It to be in here. It's playing stuff. Alrighty, so that worked just fine. The last time I installed a DVD drive, people were upset I did not actually put a DVD in it. So, here's my favorite future documentary. Drop it on in. I think Windows Media Player will play a DVD. We will find out together. So as luck would have it, Windows no longer supports playing DVDs innately. You have to go buy an app from Microsoft. And since I don't want to do that, we're going to go ahead and get a free one instead. DLC player should do it. This has been around forever. Make sure we're not going to click on a super spammy one. Yeah, this looks legit. Careful here. There we go. Don't click on any of this crap. Uh, yep. Yep. Sure. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't think we need web plugins. Don't actually want it to associate to anything. Don't need it in my context menu. Actually, that might be nice because we might be able to just like right click on the drive and play stuff. Discs playback, yes, that's the one thing we definitely want. Stop shortcuts and start menus fine. Yep, okay. Yep, install, finish, run. Sounds good. Uh, do not allow any of the things. Just gonna go ahead and close it. Close that. And I'm just gonna see if I now have a context menu on my drive. If I right click. Eh, doesn't look like it. Okay. All right, open disk. Yep, sounds good. Now you can hear the drive light off. The great garbage avalanche of sure enough, there you go. All right, that is quite enough of that or YouTube will probably be unhappy with me on copyright things. 
And then just to try it again, looks like our eject works just fine. And if you've never seen one of these slimline drives before, you may remember this type of technology from back in the Discman days in the 90s. But that's all these drives are. It's the, the same kind of spindle. This is awkward because it's kind of set up for the wrong hand. Yeah, all you have to do is take your disc and it actually locks onto the spindle. So you just push it down until it clicks and close the drive. In my case, close the flap and you're off to the races. So now that the project's done, do you think that was worth it? I'm still in the camp that I don't. Uh, like I said, with pretty much the cheapest used parts I could find, I'm into this for like 140 bucks. And I think I have 150 in my like really high end, you know, high end Blu-ray capable external drive. So if this is something you want to do, now you know how to do it. I still suggest you don't. But all the same, I hope you enjoyed watching me figure out how to do it. I have more things in mind to do to this thing in the not too distant future. And I hope you come back and join me again when we get there. As always, I want to thank you for watching this one and we'll see you then.